In Elements of Philosophy, Thomas Hobbes had proposed the ship of thesis thought experiment. If there's a really old ship, you rebuild it plank by plank. At what point does it become a new ship? Which is, I guess, also a subset of the Sorites paradox. It's one of the Sorites paradoxes. One of them. So I've thrown on all of this jargon. Let's formally define it. What is fuzzy logic? What is the Sorites paradox? All right. So, Sorites paradoxes um, were invented, discovered in ancient Greece, uh, yeah. probably about the same time as the liar paradox. And um, they involve concepts which appear to be imprecise. So, let's leave the ship of thesis aside for the moment. Let's come back to the rain example. Is it raining? Well, sometimes the answer is, yeah, obviously. <laughs> sometimes the answer is, no, obviously. But then um, it's not, there's, to say it's raining is a bit vague. It kind of, it sort of, the rain sort of fades out and so does your temptation to say that it's raining with it. <laughs> um, so um, what seems pretty clear is that sort of very, very small changes don't change the state. So suppose it's absolutely pissing down, okay? Um, if you change, if you stop one drop of rain, it's still pissing down, right? Yeah. <laughs> Generally speaking, you know, if there are a million raindrops falling in a second and you change that to 9,900 and 900, well, one less. One less, one less, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it's still raining, okay. So if, if a state holds and you change a very, very small amount, then uh, it's still raining, okay. Same with any of these sororities-like predicates, like colour, for example. Suppose I've got something that's red that's slowly changing to blue, okay. Um, if something is red and I change the wavelength by one angstrom, um, it's still red, okay. So this is sometimes called a principle of tolerance and it generates the Sorites paradox. So start with something like it's raining or it's red or whatever and you change it a very, very, very small amount. It's still raining or red. So it's raining or it's red. Let's change it one very, very small amount. It's still raining or it's red. Okay, and you can keep going. And every time if you start with something that's red, say, and you change a very, very small amount, it's still red. But in due course, this is no longer the case. It's blue. Um, but reasoning, you can infer that it's red because you can reason all the way down the chain. Yeah. So that's the Sorites paradox. You seem to be able to reason your way down the chain and um, prove something that's manifestly not the case. Um, okay. Oddly enough, the Sorites paradox wasn't greatly discussed in the medieval period. Why? I've never been sure. But it's been analysed big time by logicians since at least the 1950s. And as you might guess, many people have suggested possible solutions. Fuzzy logic is one of them. Uh, actually, there are many fuzzy logics. But what they have in common is the thought that, okay, Fuzzy logics are many-valued logics. Let's come back to that, where um, you've got an infinite number of truth values. So typically, a fuzzy logic has a truth value for every real number between zero and one. So take all the real numbers between zero. So real numbers are things like you know um, whole numbers, fractions, decimal expansions, yep. some of which are not fractions like pi and root two and so on. So all, all those numbers between zero and one. So the thought is that the truth of the statement, this is red, comes by degrees, which is a very natural thought. It starts off really, really true, ends up really, really false, and then as you run down the sororities, um, it sort of gets less and less true. Um, so the thought is that truth values themselves are measured by real numbers. They start off with one, which is really, really true, uh, end with zero, which is really, really false. And then as you go down the sororities, 
the truth value slides down from one to zero. Okay, so that's how fuzzy logic is deployed in an attempt to solve the Sorites paradox. I guess I'm looking for <laughs> one possible example of how it solves it. So we had the ship of thesis. There are these old problems of Zeno's paradoxes, Zeno's arrow, and then I guess modern problems. You can you can apply this to anything. Aging, at what point do I become 31 from 30? When does consciousness emerge in Absolutely. a kid? What would be one possible solution to this? Well, I mean, Zeno's paradoxes are a bit different, actually. Uh, let's, uh, let's bracket those for the moment. But... The fuzzy solution to any of these paradoxes, and you're right, they're, they're ubiquitous because virtually all the categories, all the predicates we use outside mathematics and maybe physics have this kind of vagueness. And, you know, like being an adult, being drunk, um, they're all vague. So they all generate these sorority ones. Yeah. Now, um, the fuzzy solution is that um, you're f if, if you try to apply classical logic, you're forgetting the fact that the truth values aren't one or zero. They can be intermediate between them. And as you run down the Sorites progression, that's essentially what happens. You start off with one, then it becomes three quarters, and then a half, then a quarter, then finally zero. Now, um, that's the basic idea. That actually does not tell you how to solve the Sorites paradox because that in itself does not tell you how to address the bit of reasoning I gave you. This is red. If this is red, that is red. If that is red, this is red. If that is red, this is red. If that is red, this is red. So you're applying a chain of inferences and each inference is kind of straight, is, is what mo logicians call modus ponens. This is the case, and if this is the case, that is the case, so that is the case. It, multitions call that modus ponens. And it's just a chain of modus ponens inferences. And so saying that, okay, you've, you've ignored the fact that there are degrees of truth doesn't tell you what to say about that. But you can tell various stories using that thought to apply to this kind of reasoning. There are more than one, there's more than one way of doing it, how you do it depends on other things that get involved in the formal logic. Um, we can go into those if you want, but probably it's best to avoid those technicalities at the moment. But the basic idea is that truth comes by degrees and that if you apply that thought in a certain way, then you can analyse the theoretical reasoning and show what's wrong with it. 